Hey man, is anybody in the listening audience that the boot licking, butt dancing, marginalized, pasteurized Negro? I suggest you walk away from the phone. <clears throat> All right. Frederick Douglass. All the days of his working life, he worked in the interest of white supremacy. I'm going to say it again. All the days of his working life, he worked for the interest of white supremacy. Now, not to, not to come across as somebody that don't know what I'm talking about. I wasn't there. I didn't know what he was going through. So we going to let somebody talk that was there, that actually knew this magic mulatto, Martin Delaney. He wrote a book about how Africans could successfully successfully go back to Africa, go link up with the brothers in Haiti and whatnot. And this is his uh, comments because Frederick Douglass had a paper at the time and he sent him a copy, hoping that he could get some publicity in his paper. Frederick Douglass acted like the book was never written and that he never even knew about Martin Delaney. This is what he said. This work, a copy of which I sent you in May, has never been noticed in any of your columns. This silence and neglect on your paper was unjustifiable. Because in noticing it, it was not necessary that you should implicate yourself, either that you were for or against. Meaning all he had to do was say, hey, hey uh, Mark Delaney got a book out. Maybe y'all should check it out. If it was negative, it would have just been on the population that purchased it. Frederick Douglass didn't even have to have a say-so. But he chose to ignore who he once called a friend. See, we got to do object thinking. We got to do critical thinking. Because it's these magic mulattoes down through the ages that have betrayed our liberation. I'm going to call the state a state. I know you're the host. I'm going to call the state a state. Anybody got the beef. You can deal with body shots. All right, I gotta ask you a question because I'm be, and this is a hundred percent sincere when I say this. Okay, I'm gonna say, and, and let me be clear, I'm not the expert, so I want you to make this argument because you, you made an extremely, um, extreme statement, and, and I don't know if it's I got a little bit of Negro or love with uh, brother Frederick Douglass because of growing up and loving the work that he did, or if it's maybe that might be extreme, but you said he worked in the interest of white supremacy all the days of his life. All the days of his life. So how can, wait, wait a minute, I'm going to ask a question. When he was fighting for the freedom of black people to be out of slavery, how was he working in the interest of white supremacy? You, you, have, to, you have to understand you, you spoke about it earlier, how it was an abolitionist movement, but there was two sides of it. His wanting to be liberated from under white supremacy was not for African independence. It was not for black self-determination. It was to be accepted as brothers and as sisters and to be uh, assimilated into white culture. And every single time, this is talked about it earlier, between the weak and the strong, and the weak always being uh, promoted. Damn. Every time there's a righteous movement, white supremacy will set up a de facto, a pseudo movement to where if, if, if you really don't have the intellect, if, you, if you're wrapped up in emotion, you're going to miss it every single time. And the reason why this show is so important I think that we're digging up old stuff and, you know, blah, 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 blah. No. History doesn't repeat itself. People repeat history. And this is why we're in the situation we're in with Obama. Whoa, we say that. Whoa, whoa. Journey. Wait a minute. Say that statement again. That's a quote. Everybody write this down. Say it again. History does not repeat itself. People repeat history. This is why we're in the situation we are with the magic mulatto sitting up in the White House right now. We have not done object thinking. We are so emotional. It's not emotion. Look at the children in Soweto in Johannesburg right now. Holding the line on Mandela. Okay, you spent 27 years in prison. That's unfortunate. 
but you were used by white supremacy for the division and Oppenheimer's, if not emotional. We're talking about liberation. Our babies need liberation tomorrow. We can't keep going for these college tricks. We got to be able to do critical thinking to see that those that they put out in front of us is not working for us. Mondelaney goes on to say, this is not the course you pursue toward any issue, whether it's good or bad, that is sent to you by white persons. You have always given them some notice. This is what he did to his own brother. Half brother. <laughs> <laughs> Half brother. Mm. All right. Now, what he became was a lackey and a flunky for Abraham Lincoln. Okay? And I want to, I want to, I want to go into this, uh, this event that took place. After the 13th Amendment was signed, Frederick Douglass was so happy. Uh, a few weeks later, Lincoln was inaugurated. Second time in office. He was invited. He was the only colored person invited to the White House. When he got there, you know, he's walking with his head up. This is his quote from his memoir. I have for some time looked upon myself as a man, but now in this multitude of whites, the elite of the land. I felt myself a man among men. See, his whole life mission was to be accepted by whites. Mm -hmm. It wasn't to be a man, to be a black man. It was to be a man in the presence of whiteness. He said, I regret to be obliged to say, I meaning he regretted what happened. He said, because this comfortable assurance did not last long. But when I reached the door, two policemen stationed there <laughs> took me rudely by my arm and ordered me to stand back. You know, You're not getting in. You, 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 and, and, and I'm not. I hope, am, am I breaking in now, or or I can jump in here? Nah, you're just not getting in. I, 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 no, I mean me jumping in on you. Was you 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 finished with that part? Because now this is what's really deep, and I understand what you're saying. See, and and I've seen people like this. When I'm around you, when I'm around Brother Louis Ali, when I'm around brothers that will fight, when I'm around United Front, when I'm around brothers keeper, when I'm around decent brothers that stand up, and when I'm around Queen Sister Nefertari, when I'm around um um uh 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 uh, 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 uh you know uh, the, uh Lady Shabazz and her, and her husband here. When I'm around these people, and I don't, I'm not saying this to be funny or anything. When I'm around Brother Cambone, you know, have the honor to sit next to the man. That's when I get humbled and feel, wow, if I'm among these people. When I'm around uh, 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 the master teacher or Brother Baruti, you know, that's when I get elevated to a sense of like, wow, man, I'm standing with people that are great. But when I'm around crackers, I'm just around my enemies. I don't care how much money they have. I'm even thinking about, is it a way that I can get to their money? Or is it a way that I can get out of there? Or is it a way I can deal with them? You know, I, I, it never is nothing related to, now I feel important because I'm around them. If anything, I just feel, ooh, I'm close to somebody that has some power that I can try to take or use to help my people. There's no sense of euphoria. It's only opportunity for warfare. And I'm saying that because what you said is, that's a real heavy statement that he been around Martin Delaney. He been around uh, probably Henry Bishop McNeil Turner, maybe. I'm not sure about that, but definitely around Henry Highland Garnett. He's around all these, uh, 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 around Harriet Tubman. And he ain't say when I'm around Harriet Tubman, I feel like I'm in the presence of God. Because, I mean, anyone, anybody that would run down and free black people back and forth, he would, you know, and so... I'm saying that to say I gotta ask you a question, and I don't want you to this to irritate it, Jeannie, but you gotta talk straight to me because this is hard. I ain't even gonna lie. This is a God's honest truth. There was no part of me that expected this show to go quite like this, and now I have to ask a question. I gotta ask you because I'm I'm slanted in the direction of Frederick Douglass. I like him. I just be honest. I don't. I won't call him. You know, we did the integration lecture. We called him, put him on the pendulum because you know he married that white female, but I didn't really really weigh it like I weighed Martin Luther King. I don't like King. I don't even make no bones about it. I think, you know, he was, he was bad for our people. He hurt us. But now, am I wrong? Keep it real, bro. Talk to me straight. Am I wrong for harboring some appreciation and respect 
for Frederick Douglass. Cause, cause I haven't. I ain't gonna lie. And I ain't, I ain't even saying I'm gonna get rid of it, but I do want to know if I'm wrong. I need to know. Am I wrong? Yeah. <laughs> As your brother in the struggle, fellow comrade, yes, sir. With, 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 and I'm coming at you humble though, but yes, sir. Dang. If, if you could give me two more points. Two more points. I don't want to hold a blind. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, go. The abolitionist movement, the abolitionist movement, the whites, what was going on, you talked about it in the North, they didn't have the agricultural base. So the South was, was controlling politics and economics of the nation. So the Civil War was brought about for the North to grab power, okay? But also, once those slaves were, once the slaves were free, the slaves invited the whole skilled labor. The whites, the middle and the lower class whites were not able to compete with the skilled labor. So you had white abolitionists that could see down the line. And what was going on is whites could not compete even within slavery. They couldn't compete. How can I get a job with you as a carpenter when you got slaves doing the work for free? I can't get a job. Dang. You had white abolitionists that were that were against slavery because they people couldn't eat. So, Yo, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did you did you analyze that or did you read that somewhere? Because what you just did, you just blew this thing wide open right here. Did you come up with that or did you read that somewhere? I think I read that, but it, it makes perfect sense. It I makes. Guess I did read that. It makes. Let me tell you, and I'm glad you said to me. Let me tell you because I read the um. The, uh, and I'm going to let you finish your point, but I read The Secret Relationship Between Blacks and Jews, Part 2. And it talked about how once slavery was over, black people was getting great work until, and so the small hats created the, uh, uh, you know, FL, CIO, uh, the, uh, the unions to prevent black people from being able to get work so that whites could get work because we were the most skilled people in the country. So it goes right to what you're saying. Whites could not compete and could not get any work anywhere because there was free labor down there and they could not compete as a labor base. Wow. That's heavy. Keep going, bro. You got another point. And Douglas, and Douglas as a Rocky to Lincoln and the Republican propaganda. What Lincoln did, he signed a treaty with Britain, with the crown of Britain, that once the North, the Union beat the Confederacy and the slaves were free. Those four million slaves were under contract then to Britain to go into Brazil and work on the sugar plantations. Lincoln had no desire whatsoever to see the black man stand uh, as free and independent. Now, the question is, did Douglas know that or not? So you saying that Lincoln was going to send black people into slavery in Brazil and he had made an agreement to do that with England?